You might be wondering why we're skipping around in the book, why we go from uh, chapter 3 to chapter 7. Well, we just finished uh, a study on rational numbers. This next chapter on ratios and proportions deals a lot with our understanding of what fractions are. So keep that question at the top of your note sheet in mind. What is a fraction? Remember that a fraction is a comparison of, uh, it, it's a number that kind of shows us uh, how two things relate to one another, how the part relates to the whole. It gives us a picture of numbers between numbers. A ratio, then, uh, is nothing more than a comparison between two things. And that's the key word I want you to remember for what a ratio is. It is a comparison. Um, so it's, it's often written one of th uh, three ways, actually. You can use a colon, you can use a fraction, or you can write the word two in between these two numbers. Um, we're going to use a fraction, uh, fractional form for the most part here, but I just want you to be aware that, that you can use a colon or you can use the other ways. Um, so think about, uh, think about the following example, example as an example of a ratio. This is kind of a common one. What is the ratio of boys to girls, and is this different from the ratio of girls to boys? Well, first of all, look at, uh, look at what we're doing here. This is, uh, illust really is, illustrates how a ratio is a comparison. What are we comparing here? We're comparing two different things. We're comparing the boys, and then we're comparing them to the number of girls. Um, so, and there, there, is a, there is a nuance there. there it does matter what order these words come in. Um, so for instance, let's say that I have 13 boys in a class, and um, let's say we have 12 girls. Let me label this. Uh, a lot of times labels are going to help in this chapter. Uh, 13 boys, 12 girls. Well, is that different than the number of girls to boys? Yeah, because that was at 12 girls to 13 boys. And uh, as you can clearly see, 13 to 12 is not the same as 12 to 13. Just to give you an idea of how important it is, not just to say that we are comparing things, but in what order are we comparing them. Um, so that gives you the idea of ratios. Um, so let's, let's look at a, another example here. In the next example, uh, we're going to look at equivalent ratios, something, a very important term here. Equivalent, notice the root word here, equal. So equal ratios. If you look at the blue shaded regions, let me just outline these real quick. Notice one, the one I'm outlining right now, has 28 total rectangles. 20 of them are shaded in. And the other one, I only have, uh, I'm sorry, the, the other one had 48. This one only has 12. So I have um, seven that are shaded in, five that are not. Notice what happens. Uh, you can probably already see it, but when I move these, uh, these outlined areas away, you can see that these blue areas have the same size. Um, so even though one, uh, one overall rectangle only has 12, and the other only has, uh, has 48, so we have four times as many, notice that these ratios are equivalent to each other. They have the same area. Because if you notice, 28 20 is, remember I said that one has four times as many rectangles? Oh yeah, you could write it the, the other way, 5 sevenths and 20 to 28. Um, if I simplify the other one, notice if I divide by 4, um, I end up with 5 to 7. And if I divide 48 by 4, I end up with 12. Notice that each of those larger rectangles on the left is the same as four of the smaller rectangles on the right. So it's a 1 to 4 uh, correspondence there from the left side to the right side if we're comparing the two rectangles. So lots of different comparisons happening there. You notice they are equivalent. So how do you find equivalent ratios? Well, I've showed you one way. Take the ratio 9 to 27, or you can think of it as 9 27 I can divide top and bottom by 3 and get 3 ninths. Or uh, that should be 3 ninths. So I could divide, if I divide it by 9, I get 1 third. Um, the other way I could do this, so I could, I could divide uh, to simplify it or... I could actually multiply to make it less simplified. Either way, so if I multiply by 3, I get 27 over 81. Um, either way, I end up with a different ratio that's still equal. So think about uh, what we did in the past with, uh, with simplifying uh, fractions to get the same fraction, just that looks different. So here with 64 24 um, I have a couple options. I could divide by uh, 2. If I divide by 2, I end up with 32 over 12. 
Um, or if I just divide by 8 the whole way down, I get uh, 8 over three, 8 to 3. So a lot, it's pretty easy to find equivalent ratios. Um, now, what if we take two equivalent ratios, we set them equal to each other? This is going to be really uh, important here uh, in the future. Uh, notice the goal here. We're looking at proportions. This is another uh, term we're going to hear a lot in this, in this unit. A proportion uh, is when we have two ratios that are equivalent. So ratios that are equal to each other, we say they're in proportion or they form a proportion. And notice how we can test for this. Um, obviously, if a proportion is equivalent ratios, let's just see if we have equal ratios. So we're going to do a little check step here, 3 27ths and 2 18ths. Notice there's no number I could multiply, well, there is, that I can multiply 3 by to get to 2. I mean, I could multiply, uh, or I could, I could divide that to get from 3 to 2. Um, but, uh, so, you know, dividing is multiplying by a fraction. So, um, it would be, what, 2 thirds? Yeah, I multiply the left, each number on the left by 2 thirds to give me 2 eighteenths. Uh, a little bit easier way, though, is just to simplify both of them down to find what the base ratio is here. So, 3 27ths is 1 ninth. Notice 2 eighteenths is also 1 ninth. This forms a proportion. Uh, looking at the next one, then, 12 fifteenths and 27 thirty-sixths. Uh, we're going to see if that's equal. So take a look at 12 fifteenths first. I can divide top and bottom by 3. And if I divide top and bottom by 3, I end up with 4 fifths. So let's see if that equals the other one. I can divide this one by 9, and I end up with 3 fourths. Notice those are not equal, so these do not form equal uh, proportions, or they don't form a proportion. I could also, I do have the option, if it's pretty clear, like if I have one half and two fourths, I know I can multiply one half by two times two on top times two on bottom to get to two fourths, so I could, I could use multiplication here as well if I so choose. All right, let's look at an example then. This is more like what we'll be looking at throughout the chapter. When you come across a word problem, the first question you want to ask yourself is this. What are we comparing? Is a comparison being made here? Because if there is... Uh, there's going to be a ratio involved. Remember that word comparing tells us to use a ratio. So in this problem, it's asking me, notice it says the word the same. So there's a hint to you that there should be an equal sign involved. So there's some key words to look for. Notice I'm comparing water and silver. I have a mixture here, kind of like I'm making a recipe. So a lot of times proportions, you probably, you know, if you do any cooking or baking at all, um, and you need to like double a recipe or triple a recipe. Uh, you might have you might have used the word keeping having your proportions correct. Um, so that's uh, that's another example of this. You might see that um, uh, when we look at examples of, of real life applications here. Um, but here I have a mixture of uh, of silver and water. I'm ba I'm not mixing them. I'm comparing their weight to see. Uh, uh, to see if I have actual silver here. Um, the, the application is a lot of times you could check to see if something is actual gold or silver or some kind of precious metal to see how much it weighs compared to a, a certain amount of water. If it weighs that, um, that right amount, then you know it's that actual metal. So the first part here says I have uh, 42 cubic feet of water, okay, and uh, uh, let's see, four cubic feet of silver. Notice the four degrees is not necessary. Um, that's just telling me the temperature. Um, it doesn't have anything to do with the, uh, how much I have. So four uh, cubic feet of silver compared to 42 cubic feet of water. I'm going to see, uh, and notice that's, that's telling me a stated fact. Um, if it's silver, if I have four cubic feet of it, so uh, one foot by one foot by one foot a cube, it's going to have this. It's going to weigh the same amount as 42 cubic feet of water. So that's a lot of water. All right. So the other th uh, amount I have, I actually have uh, 210 cubic feet of water, and see if that weighs 20 for 20 cubic feet of silver. So notice. I have silver on top, so I'm going to keep silver on top. I have water on bottom. I'll keep water on bottom. When you're dealing with, dealing with proportions, one of the important things to make sure that you do is that you keep everything lined up. If you start with silver on top, keep silver on top. Otherwise, we're comparing apples and oranges. We're not making the same comparison. 
And then all I'm going to do is fill in the information I have. 210 cubic feet of water, 20 cubic feet of silver, and now I'm going to see if this is equal. I'm going to simplify both of these. So the, the one, the, the baseline I have is that it's 2 for every 21 waters. On the other side, you notice it simplifies out to the same thing. So yes, I do know that my mixture here, is, or my comparison, is the same. Um, I do know that this is real silver uh, because it weighs the correct amount compared to the amount of water. So for your uh, homework, you're going to go in the book there. It's going to have a couple examples just like the ones we showed you. Um, and uh, you'll also have a word problem to look at.